everyone, welcome to another Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay. It's time to paint along. So grab a brush, grab some paints, grab a model and paint along. Let's rid the world of unpainted models together, one model at a time, one week at a time. I've been having fun this week. I've been doing a lot of commissions lately. I've actually been kind of busy with commissions. If you want a commission, by the way, contact me at commissions at jadedproductions.com. I would love to paint for you. I've been having fun. Uh, I'm not going to be painting commissions during this the set. Uh, I've decided that I'm going to make a tutorial out of this latest one because I've never gotten to paint a Contemptor Dreadnought right now, so I'm kind of painting one up for a commission. I'll maybe show you a couple other work, recent works that I've been doing. But uh, today I'm just going to return back to my Tyranid roots and paint some more Tyranids as I've always been doing for like the last four and five months. Uh, I'm probably going to take a break from Tyranids, I'm thinking, but uh, yeah, we'll see. So let's get painting. Hey everyone, so today I'll be painting some Hive Guard, some Warriors. Um, these are the relatively new Hive Guard. Because I don't like the old Hive Guard, they're metal. I have the old metal ones. And I guess the uh, the fine cast ones would be okay. But the metal ones are so front heavy and they kind of suck when you're playing with them on the battlefield. So I am going to work on painting up these guys. Um, so that way I can, uh, you know, get them on the battlefield. And, um,. Yeah, that way you know I'll have a you know it'll only lead to better battle reports because I want to worry about my uh, hive guard falling over constantly. So let's start off with I'm gonna put putting up a video tonight, uh, probably even before this video. Now I've been really good this week, um, and there's a reason for that. And I'm gonna thank I'm gonna put up a video thanking um, the Patreon people. So if any of you Patreon people are here watching, and once again, thank you so much. As well as the Warpeds. Now, obviously, I am thankful for every subscriber and viewer that I have. You know, you guys support me in your own way. But, um, I was able to take the extra funds from last month's Patreon, and a bit of the Warp uh, funds, and I was able to fix my computer. It was a bit expensive, but uh, I fixed my computer in the end. It actually needed a new processor. I got my computer taken in because all of a sudden the key was all of a sudden it started shutting off and the reason was uh, the processor wasn't working. I took it into a computer shop. So I needed to order a new processor. So I did. Um, I got a new processor, but it was a bit expensive, right? Because processors cost money. But now my computer is running really smoothly. I wouldn't say perfect, like, it, like, but it's almost as close to new as you can get as when I built it. So it is amazing. Um, so what does that mean for all you people? Basically means that, you know, this leg of videos will probably end. This week I've been really good. Um, I'm pretty much actually caught up. Today's Thursday. And I have already put out three videos in the free and the, um, this week's painting tutorial is rendering right now for the warp. Uh, this week's painting tutorial is Captain Badrock. A really, really cool orc. He was really complicated to paint. He's a very busy model. So he took a lot of steps. The tutorials are really long. Um, but I'll show you him. I'll grab him right now. He's also a commission. So that was pretty good. Uh, for Mike, here he is right here. So here's Captain Badruck. There was no basing requested. Uh, sorry, requested no basing. So here he is. He looks awesome. He looks very orky. But a very busy model nonetheless. Because so many colors, very bright, very vibrant colors. So he was cool. I had some fun, learned a lot. Like, I've been pushing myself as a painter lately. Um, I do find myself that every new tutorial or model that I'm picking up, I'm trying something new. And that's really good. Because that's how we grow as artists and people. And I've actually, it's been really fun. I just... It sounds weird saying that, but lately I've been actually feeling like an artist. I've been working hard on my commissions, and the people have been really happy with them. You know, um, I've done a few in the last week, and or a couple in the last week, a couple models, and both times the, the the owners have been very happy, and that's what I like. I like making people happy about these kind of things. I, I charge as I said a little bit more than I did used to, not that much more, but a bit more. But actually, what my time is is quasi worth. You know, and um, it doesn't matter to the people. They they love the model in the end, and that's what matters. You know, that's the thing about commission painting. You pay a little bit more, but you get a great model in the end that you didn't have to work on yourself. And that's what you're essentially doing. You're paying someone else to paint it, right? So, good. That color's done. So now I'm going to work on blue on the carapaces and uh, get the carapace 
feathering done. It's been a good week, you know. I had a few bad weeks in a while for a while, but this is a good week. My computer's fixed, and that just it, seriously. I'm gonna, as I said, I'm gonna make a video solely thanking people because it is such a load off my shoulders. Um, having a working computer again, um, it sucks being an internet, you know, a YouTuber and not having a working computer. It really is not good. So it feels good to have a working computer again. And um, yeah, it really does. What else is new? Um, I have to narrow down the list. I haven't made a video of officially, but starting next week, now the next week, I might delay it by one week, we'll see. But, um, I'm going to start a face-off tournament. Um, face-off is my warp, um, video series. That I, I've done one preview of it for free. And I've decided to do a series, a whole season, of a tournament. And I'm going to put it out for free and the warp. And the 16 people that I'm putting into the tournament, it's a 16 person tournament, like not players, uh, 16 characters or things. Um, I'm going to ask for your suggestions this weekend and then finalize the, the tournament I'm thinking. It might be next week then. I might delay it by a week. But uh, it's good. I have some in mind. And we'll see. I'll try to get as many of the suggestions in, as possible. And if I don't get any of your any, if I'm missing a suggestion one season, I'll just put it, them in this in the the thing the next season. And we'll keep doing this because sixteen a sixteen person tournament. If I do one episode a week for free and one in the warp, uh, that would be about two months worth of content. So, two months worth of content, and then uh, I'll put it out. On weeks that there is a battle report, I'll put it on Thursdays. And if I'm not able to film a battle report that week, it'll take the spot of the battle report. But of course my goal is to have a battle report every week, but uh, some weeks I have not been able to film them lately. So, but, uh, yeah. But yeah, it feels so good having the working computer again and hitting render and like that. So, oh, what does it mean for you? Sorry, no lag. It means that I can finally really edit the How to Play 40Ks. And one went up yesterday. There was a slight error, which people pointed out. But I said the wrong thing, but I put the correct information in about the strength versus toughness. You can wound up to strength plus three um, for toughness. You know, so if your strength's four gun, you can wound up to a toughness seven creature. Uh, but I said the wrong thing, but it's okay. It was a really, it was by far the hardest one to make so far because the shooting phase is by far the most complicated phase. By far, right? There's so many types, there's three types of saves you can take. You have to know the weapon profiles. You have to know the ballistic skill. You have to know the toughness. Um, it's a very, it's by far the hardest, uh, part of the game to teach, you know, versus close combat, the assault phase, um, the assault phase is pretty easy relative to the shooting phase, because all you need to do is weapon skill, weapon skill, compare the two, you're hitting on either fours, threes, sometimes fives, and it's strength versus toughness again. But there's no cover saves in close combat. It's either an invol, armor save, or death. So, but the next video will not be on the close combat phase, the assault phase. It's going to be on flamer templates. Uh, sorry, t it's on template weapons in the shooting phase. And then... Um, Yeah, template weapons in the shooting phase is the next one. And then I want to cover vehicles. Because now that we've covered moving and shooting, it's a good thing to cover vehicles. And I'll cover vehicles in depth and, and how they can move and, and flat out and everything like that. So that'll be good. Uh, 
And uh, yeah, then you know, then I will get on to the assault phase. I saw the Avengers last week. That was good. I don't remember if I saw it before or after Pain of Jay. I liked it. Some people have problems with it. I kind of forget that uh, in the Avengers, now there's a great meme right now, and it's like the moment you realize that um, that uh, what's his name? Um Oh, I'll remember in a second. That a guy's friends with himself. Um, I don't remember that after. But uh, there's a good meme about it. Yeah. I have to remember it. Oh, what's his name? But, uh, yeah, it's a really funny meme. Oh, my gosh. I forget his name. Hmm, I'll be right back. Sorry, I'm back. Uh, my wife just got home, and, uh, Rubik wanted to see her. Oh, sorry. The person I was thinking of was Quicksilver. I remembered it just a second ago. So Quicksilver. There's a great meme I saw. It's like the moment when you realize that Quicksilver is best friends with Quicksilver because um, they were both... Uh, I kind of forgot about this. Quicksilver has been in two mo movies recently. He was in um, Days of Future Past and then he was in The Avengers. So when you combine the two, it doesn't make any sense because one of them, he's like, you know, a teenager in the 19... Or late teens, early 20s in the 1970s, and then he's mid 20s in 19, or in the 2000s, whatever. It's okay. And uh, it's kind of funny because both um, both actors were in Kick Ass together. The main guy in Kick Ass played Quicksilver in The Avengers. It's hard, I didn't even recognize him, you know, he doesn't look anything alike. Um, and his buddy in the movie, uh, Kick Ass, is um, silver is Quicksilver in um, Days of Future Past? So, but uh, yeah. So as I said, things are good. I'm I'm happy right now. It's can't complain. You know, I'm having a really good time with commissions so far. I I missed commissions. There's some things I didn't miss about commissions, but there's the things I did miss, um, especially now that I'm. I'm having a good time charging more appropriately. Um, one of the things I love about doing commissions is that you get to paint models that you don't normally get to paint. You know, I've been painting Tyranids for the last five months. And I took a break and painted, you know, a couple great knights and some orcs and stuff. Some grot tanks, of course, because grot tanks are awesome. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's battle report. One part due to my... Uh, computer being fixed, I can now put one part battle reports up again. I didn't really like putting out multiple part battle reports. I really prided myself on putting out one part battle reports. Um, and then I couldn't because it just took forever to render. And uh, of course the Gratangs had fun this week's battle report. I'm not going to ruin anything, but uh, it was fun. It was a good battle report against uh, Dave. It was fun. It was a very different game than my normal Orky games, because uh, he brought the Fortress of Redemption, which I have never played against in a battle report, and it was hilarious. Basically, he stuck every one of his guys in the Fortress of Redemption, and they were scary, so I kind of avoided it the entire game, avoiding two-thirds of, you know, no, not even two-thirds, like 80% of his army with my orcs, because there was a tw basically an invisible line 24 inches away from him, and if any... 
one of my boys or any Grot tank crossed that line, I would have died instantly because um, he had the banner of devastation. So all of his bolters were salvo four, and they of course weren't moving because they um, they were in the fortress of redemption. So they were firing like four shots each. That just insane. Like there's nothing, you know. Even grot tanks would not suffice against that thing, because three out of every four shots would hit, and then so one out of every two guys would glance a tank, a uh, grot tank, and it was just it was crazy. So I it was mills from war, and we I just kind of avoided. It, it was a pretty good tactic. You know. So, pretty good tactic, and I'm not saying one, but uh, yeah, it's a good game. That's all that matters. Um, <laughs> I should get a little more Caldor Sky. What else is new and exciting? Uh, not a whole lot. I booked my hotel room for for Adepticon last week. I'm actually debating. I know Adam's listening to this. Adam, how's it going? I'm I'm going to Gen Con. It's coming up. I'm going to Gen Con. And um, I'm actually debating of giving up my hotel room. I'm, I'm I'm downtown right now. I'm not like right beside the uh, convention center, but um, I'm pretty close. I'm like a block and a half away. But you know what? Money's been a little tight lately. And I just don't, like, even with the with the block, you know, the Gen Con block discount, the hotel room is still, like, $1,500 Canadian. The problem is, since I booked it, the Canadian dollar has died. And I thought, well, at least, you know, if I shared the hotel room with someone, um, and originally it said that I had a, a, uh, a double room, but when it I checked closer, it said not guaranteed though. So I contacted the hotel, and they said, "Yeah, there's no guarantee of getting a double room. The odds are I'm gonna end up in a single bedroom." And I was like, "Okay, well I can't ask someone to share a hotel room with me. I know like Miss like Adam from Greenleaf wanted to, and Owen wants to, but uh, I just can't share a room." Like, it would be weird sharing a room with one bed in it. Like, we could sleep beside the bed or something, but it would be the most comfortable. And it's so expensive. And I just don't know if if the cost is actually worth it. Um, versus sucking it up. You know, last year, I took the bus. It wasn't very convenient. It was annoying. But it's cheap. Like, it's $50 for the bus. But if you stay at, like, the, the, um, the hotel's... On the border of the city, like the um, the airport, it's less than half the cost. It really is. So I'm I'm really considering just you know what I don't need the greatest hotel room because I'm gonna spend the whole day at the convention center anyway. Um, I, I just you know I I gotta prioritize my money and I just don't feel that it's the the wisest decision right now. So I'm thinking about it. So, Adam, obviously, if you're out there, that's what I'm thinking right now. Contact me if you want to talk about it and stuff. But... And also, you missed a spot, Adam. But uh, I just don't... I don't know. I don't see justifying that cost, personally. You know, I'm, uh, I'm trying to leave my other job soon. I'm, I'm trying to do commissions, and um, I don't know. As I said, it, it really it took the funds from Patreon to really actually be able to, to fix my computer. So I just I see it as being very hypocritical to spend that kind of money. I instead could buy, you know I don't know. Spend save five hundred bucks and buy some models or something. That's Three Imperial Knights, or two Imperial Knights, two and a half, three Imperial Knights, let's say. Of course, I only want one, one or two more. 
Um, right now I'm working, oh, sorry, I wanna show you this. This is the model I'm currently working on for the commissions. Uh, it's a bit different, but it's a Raven Guard um, Contemptor Dreadnought. And it's not that neat. I gotta paint the gun and the bullets in the gun, the rope. Like, it's still missing a few colors. I really love the eyes. It's hard to convey, show the eyes right now, but I really love the way the eyes turned out because they had a really smooth gradient on them. But uh, it's looking awesome. This is for Wyatt, and uh, it just, it's great. Cool model. I'm having a great time painting it. My goal is, when I'm doing my commissions now, is to be fast. Not, like, fast cutting the, uh, the quality, but I want a quick turnaround. So that's why I'm taking small commissions. Because I can paint, you know, uh, a model in a day or two. And then the person gets the model back. Like, it's not going to spend weeks here, you know, or some will. Like, I'm going to get backed up eventually, like, you know. But once it's on the table, it's going to be going quickly. And that is good. That is what I want to do. Um, because, yeah, you know, that to me is good. A good commission painter. And plus, I don't charge that much, but it really does, you know, people are willing to pay a little bit more than, you know, I, I would have charged before, knowing that I, um, I get them back quickly. And obviously I do not paint, like I'm painting this is just my standard tabletop level, right? This is not my higher level paint jobs um, that I'm doing with my paint with J's. I spent a lot more time on a model. You know, I've spent so many hours already on that Contemptor. Um, and that's what, you know, I charge for. Dun, dun, dun. What else? Yeah, I have another opponent coming up next week. So there'll be another battle report next week, of course. I don't know what army I'm gonna play yet. Um, I gotta get some more battle reports in. That's been the biggest challenge. Filming battle reports lately. Just with my schedule and stuff. But uh, I have one schedule for next week. It's gonna be a lot of fun. New opponent. I don't know what army's gonna bring, but uh, yeah, either way, it'll be fun. <laughs> I'm trying to schedule. There's a local uh, Necron player that, I'm, that he's been. Tr we've been hopefully gonna get a battle report in. I really want to try a uh, Imperial Knight. Versus Necron game. I only have three Imperial Knights, but still. I think it'll be fun trying it out versus Necrons. Um, some will die. You know, it'll, be, it'll be pretty cool. But, uh, you know. It'll be fun. That's what matters. Mm -hmm. I'm curious. Because we did a Necron versus, but it wasn't the Decurion detachment. Um, we did a Necron versus Great uh, Imperial Knight Battle Report in the Warp. But it wasn't the Decurion detachment. But the Necrons did really well against the Imperial Knights. So. And that's the thing. Like, it's just, the only th the thing though is, uh, Necrons are, you know, they're the hardest to kill. But Imperial Knights, in close combat, will eat through Necrons. Because it'll just be, you know... Um, basically, D, D is the bane of Necrons' existence. Because anything with D, they not only don't get their save, they don't get their reanimation. Because D, is, D ignores reanimation protocols. And... If that's the case, um, 
sorry, with D ignoring it. So in close combat, you know, um, the Imperial Knights would be good because they just will eat a Necron squad every basically full turn. Like the Castigator, the Castigator's gonna have a problem because he they'll get reanimation against the Castigator. It'll only be a five up, but they can like pop an orb to make it re-rollable five up, re-roll ones. So that's pretty, you know, that's pretty scary. Um, but the other is strength D is, is, you know, pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. I really like the Forge One ones. Just they look so much better. I love the tall, like, laggy ones as opposed to the very boxy ones. Good. So now I'll finish up the carapaces and we're in good shape. We're in good shape. I watched the last episode of The Letterman Show yesterday. David Letterman did his last episode. It was okay. I thought he was going to do more. Like, it wasn't very eventful. Like, the, the last episode where Conan was on, he had Will Ferrell singing Freebird at the very end. It was it was pretty funny. But uh, Letterman, he had Foo Fighters. But they, you know, you didn't see them perform. You just basically heard them. And, yeah, it was okay. I really liked the top ten. They had a bunch of really well-known comedians and a couple, like, Pey Peyton Manning even did it. They had ten different people do the top ten. And the, you know, big names, Jim Carrey, Chris Rock, Jerry Seinfeld, Julie Louise Dreyfus, Barbara Walters, uh, Peyton Manning, Bill Murray, Tina Fey, um, you know, more, more. um, who else? I think that's it. Jim Carrey. Um, oh, Steve Martin. the right consistency. So that was cool. <laughs> I'm excited for this. I'm probably getting another uh, another Adeptus Mechanicus Codex coming soon because the Skitari are all like they're not the new models aren't in the Skitari Codex, right? They're the other guys. So we'll probably get a new codex for them. GW man, they're nonstop. It's a fun time to be a games workshop player. We had a new codex every like other week. Yeah. Um Yeah. That's it. That. Things are good. Not very eventful week. It was Victoria Day weekend, so it was a long weekend that just passed. It was the May 2-4 weekend, except sometimes it happens the week before May 2-4. It used to be just called, like, people used to just call it the May 2-4 weekend, but that gets really confusing years like this, where May 2-4 is not the May 2-4 weekend. So, but, uh, yeah, it was Victoria Day weekend, so I saw some fireworks and stuff. Uh, that's the thing about Peterborough. Guelph... They didn't sell a lot of fireworks anywhere. Like in Guelph, you couldn't set off fireworks legally. But in Peterborough, everyone sells fireworks. Like Walmart sells fireworks. And and it just it was fun getting used to that. We'd go to, you know, your grocery store and see fireworks. Just you didn't see that in, in Guelph. I'm really excited, though, for Gen Con. I've been looking forward to it for a while. Um, I'm thinking you think that Adepticon is going to be more fun. But I think Adepti Gen Con is going to be fun. Too. I just don't... There's no Games Workshop stuff at all. Like, I was looking at it, other than role-playing 40K, um, there's not a whole lot of... There's not a whole lot of 40K. And then for, there's a lot of War Machine... But as, as I've said many times, I'm not a competitive War Machine player. And, uh, like, 
Adepticon, you can play in the Iron Arena for a whole week for like five bucks, the whole weekend, right? But at Adept, but at Gen Con, it's ten dollars a day. So I might do Iron Arena one or two days maybe. But um, I don't think I'm, I'm not going to pay for it the whole time because that's expensive. I know I'm not going to use it every day. You know, last year I really just met people, hung out with people, um, shopped a lot. And I think I'm going to do the same thing this year. I don't see myself playing a whole lot of War Machine. I'll probably maybe play for a day or two or maybe a day in the Iron Arena. Problem is in the Iron Arena last year, like I couldn't even film a battle report in it. It was so loud. Um, so we'll see. And it's the same place. I didn't. The problem is this year I was gone on Saturday, on Sunday when the uh, when registration opened. I wasn't at home. And I got home, and a lot of the events I was actually thinking of going to were sold out. But last year, like for example, I really want to see Dice Tower live. So I got a ticket, I showed up a minute after it started, and the room was fu filled. Um, they stupidly weren't taking tickets. And so like everyone walked in, and so they overbooked the room essentially because they weren't taking tickets. If they were, were taking tickets, you know, the room wouldn't be filled because they only were enough tickets as seats. So I went to the event and I didn't get in. And then this year, I just couldn't even get a ticket. So, oops. I'm not meant to see Dice Tower Live. Let's just take it as that. You know. um, my battle report with Leland at Mini Wargaming finally went up. I filmed it so long ago. I filmed it when I, the day after Cody Rue and Mike and all the awesome guys came from around you know North America to came here and play. We all went up to Mini Wargaming the next day. So it's been that long. And it's finally went up, so I can finally talk about it. Oh man, I'm getting flack about that. But uh, what people didn't know was we only had a very limited time. And so to make the game go quick, um, Leland hadn't been filming. But it was Leland's first battle report, so he was a bit slow. And um, so I brought knights, because it's a fast army. right? He knew I was bringing knights. Um, I completely was okay with him tailoring because knights against a an all comers list would not be a fun game, and as you saw by his list, like he he um, his list was heavily tailored. One of the most tailored lists I've ever faced with an army. Uh, he had twenty like seven meltas or kami meltas or melt. It was all melta, like giant amounts of melta. Now sisters of battle, or adeptus sororitas as they're now called, are known for a combination of meltas and flamers. That's true. And most lists would have about five or six of each, but not 20 of each, you know? And he had 28, I said 26, 20, something like that. 20, give or take one or two. 27, 26 Meltas. And um, no Flamers. So he knew what he was up against, and it was okay. But it was, the Battle Report was r incredibly one-sided because of his rolling. Uh, I rolled really well. And he rolled really badly. We had a great time. Like, we had so much fun playing it. It was just like, oh my goodness, his rolling was just so bad. I couldn't convey how bad his rolling was. He should earn the nickname The Cooler and take it back from Owen because his rolling was so bad. So, it was a very one-sided battle report. I had so fun, and that's what matters. You know, it's all about fun. We had a great time. You can tell the whole time that he... That we're like we're having a good time, and that's what matters. Um, but we filmed. The funniest thing was we actually filmed that entire battle report, right? I think the game ended turn three or four. We filmed, finished the entire game. And we're like we're done, because um, I had to leave after we only had you know a few hours, but it only took like an hour and ten minutes to film. So we were done, and everyone else was just in turn one of their games, because there were a lot of battle reports going on at the same time as us. But they were all big games, like 2,000 points, or really, really big banter battle reports, like Dave versus Dave. So, um, we finished our entire game before anyone else was done turn one. And we're like, we're done. And we finished our post game, and everyone else was still on turn one. It was just a lot, of, it was really funny. We, you know,
Yeah. So that was good. That was a great time. And I wish Leland nothing but the best. You know, I think he's going to make great battle reports. I had a great time playing against him when I worked at Mini Wargaming. So he's, he's going to make some good battle reports. He's a good guy who likes people. And, uh, yeah. Oops. Drop something. Look. Um, he's a good guy. So. So yeah, that's good. Commission is going well. Um, BB King died this week. That was unfortunate. Yeah. Well, oh yeah, Dave and Matt, they announced this week that they're going to Britain. That's pretty cool. I wonder what for. I don't think they're going solely to meet people. There's probably like a, probably a church event or something, but uh, that's really cool. I'm, I'm very glad that the British and the I think they're going to Ireland as well. So it's really cool that fans will finally get to meet them. Because I always want to go to England. And my goal, I think, is I'm going to try to go next year. I think next year I'm going to try to go make a, a date, like a whole trip out of it. And uh, I should probably start planning now. But uh, maybe start saving up my money because it's going to be expensive. But uh, and meet all the British people. You know, travel a bit. Um... And dedicate half the time to wargaming and meeting fans. You know, like I love to meet Striking Scorpion. Also, I have a lot of I do have a lot of viewers, and I'm very much aware of that. There's a lot of British viewers. You know, go talk to Archon Timatron. That'd be really cool. And I'm, I'm very happy that uh, Dave and Matt are finally able to meet people. Because there's, you know, the British fans, most of the even American fans haven't had a chance to meet Dave and Matt. Because other than, what did they go? They went to Gen Con? Or Adepticon once. They went to one of the cons. I think it was Gen Con? Maybe it was Adepticon. I forget. They went to one of the conventions. They went to Games Day in Chicago. And I think that's it. You know, for they, they, it's hard for them to travel because when they go places, they bring their wives and family. Um, not usually the case for me. So I can kind of go places. But it's hard for them. And they very rarely do the... Um, even the Americans have a chance to go meet them. And it's, just, it's always cool. Like I, I love meeting my viewers and, and talking to them. So it's, it's you know... They're gonna have a good time. They're gonna, I think they're doing like a live Q and A, a live like what's it called? Um, sit and talk. So that's gonna be cool. Um, yeah, one day I should. I really should plan it. I have a couple more things on the burner first that I want to accomplish, but uh, there's definitely. A trip in the future to Britain. I got to. I want to go to Warhammer World. I want to go to... Uh, it would be really cool to go to a games day. That's what I'd love to do. Like, time it perfectly. Go to a games day. And... Whatever they're called now. And... That would be amazing. I would love that. Because... Yeah. Oh, that would be amazing. That'd be a dream trip for me, not my wife. She'd have fun, and obviously she'd come too, because she loved, She would love to go to Britain one day. And then, as I said, I'd just allocate some time to her, because not all the time towards, you know, Warhammer. I can't do that. That would be mean. Most of the time. But not all. Um, she'd have a good time. She would definitely have a good time. Also, apparently, there was an inappropriate comment. Now, I don't think it was me. I went through the battle report, and I couldn't find it with Leland. Um, 
I don't think I made the comment because based on what the viewer said the comment was, I don't see myself saying that sentence. But uh, I don't think it was me. I'm just going to say it. I don't think it was me. But apparently there was an inappropriate comment said in our battle report. And I'm not going to repeat it, obviously, either, because uh, that's not my nature. But uh, if I don't think it was me. I really don't. I sincerely apologize if it was me, but I don't think it was me. I think maybe Leland might have accidentally said something. But uh, I don't... Yeah, I just... Based on what the viewer said, so I rewatched and I couldn't find the comments. But apparently someone... Like, they heard something... One of us say it. I don't know. So... I don't know. I tend to keep things clean. I don't, I don't really have any... Ex, you know, any R-rated conversations in my videos... No. So. That is the back heels. No, that one's good. That one isn't. <laughs> oh yeah, I would love to go to Britain. Because I've had a chance to meet a lot of Americans. And Canadians as well. And that's good. I love meeting the Americans. And the Canadians. But I would love, my two dream trips, people, are Britain, UK, obviously, because um, maybe I should do a Kickstarter. That'd be kind of a fun. Bring Jay to the UK, Kickstarter. What do you guys think? Do you think I would do that? What do you think people would actually support that? Because if I if I did a Kickstarter, if the prize is if you you know put in a certain amount, I will come somewhere and meet you or something. I don't know. That'd be kind of fun. That'd be kind of a cool idea. Crowdfund, but um, yeah, probably work. Sorry, yeah, my two trips. I'm losing my mind here. Um, our UK and Australia. The British colonies, you know, because that's the other two areas. Other than Germany, I'd love to go to Germany as well and meet people. But um, at least if I went to like the UK, people could probably get, and especially if it was like for Games Day or something, right? If it was for a Games Day, I could actually uh, meet a lot of people around Europe because most Europeans would come to the Games Day because it's the big event. Uh, but uh, Australia as well. I have ton. I have some fans, you know, and some viewers that I really talk to a lot, like Nathan, and uh, I have several viewers in New Zealand and uh, and Australia that I would love to meet as well. And it's much easier for one person to go down and meet a lot of people than to expect a lot of people to come to Canada one at a time to play battle reports, right? So, one trip would be called J in the UK, or UKJ, and the other one would be called Australia. I think Australia would be cool too. Bit of a trip, bit of a plane trip, but uh, Australia would be very cool. So Australians, one day, I promise. And then I have to go to New Zealand just to thank them for Lord of the Rings. You know, I believe that's proper protocol. But that'd be really cool. One day. One day. Until then, I'll take I'll settle for these little trips. I love conventions. Like I said, love the conventions. It's really cool. Before last year, I'd never been to a convention, and now I've been to like four so far. Adepticon twice, Gen Con once, and LVO. Yeah. Adam, you did miss a spot. So, what else? Um, yeah. 
It's really cool. I'm very, I'm definitely feeling like every couple weeks, I find myself feeling even more integrated into the community here. The Peterborough gaming community has been really good. By no means are they standoffish or anything. I just, it's been hard with my schedule. I work a lot. I'm a very busy bee. And I don't find myself time to actually integrate myself into the community. And it's my fault. As I said, I'm busy and I just, I should try harder. But it's hard with my work schedule. And I've been very fortunate to meet some people like Dave and Stu and uh, Ian and, you know, and a bunch of other people. Like, I was just, I'm going to hopefully get a, in a battle report with a guy named Matt. So that'll be Matt and Dave. Um, Matt's the, the resident Necron player. So I, that'll be cool. Hopefully I get a bow report in with soon. I'm definitely if I can get a bow report in with him, I'm definitely trying Imperial Knights, and he'd know it ahead of time. But the best thing about Necrons is that you can face the the they're one of those armies that you could bring Imperial Knights, and they are still really good against you. Their general all comer Necron army is still pretty strong against uh, Imperial Knights. So, but that'd be cool, and you know. I just I've been very fortunate to integrate myself with some people, and then I'm I'm able to go to these events now. I had a great time at Brawl. I'm going to go to the next Brawl. Um, yeah, so I I'm just I'm having a good time, and it's finally able. It took me about a you know almost a year, but now that I'm integrated in, it's it's so much easier to find people to play, and and it's so cool to just meet the people. Also, I can't really get down to uh, Jeff's cards and comics on Mondays, which is the war game day here because of my work. That's another issue, but it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are coming along. They're almost done. They're almost my tabletop. You know, battle report standard. Yeah. Well. These guys, they're going to be cool. That's it. I'm just excited to have them on the battlefield finally. There we go, we'll call them at that. And then um, I'll paint the the guns on the high guard next. These guys are basically battle report worthy. You know, they're not too crazy. I'm gonna slowly finish these Tyranids. It's gonna be, you know, a while. Maybe I might, I'm thinking in May I might take, not May, June, I might take a break from Tyranids because I've been painting Tyranids for on and off for five months now. So what next? Probably Dark Angels. Get them done. I have a bunch of Dark Angels that need to be painted. Excuse me. Um, yeah, maybe Dark Angels. I haven't decided yet. More Orcs. Mm, I'm pretty good for Orcs right now. I'm pretty good for Grey Knights. But uh, Dark Angels, I could paint, you know, like I could paint uh, Azrael. I have an Azrael. I should just get them painted. And I could paint a bunch of bikers. I have like 18 bikes. So that'd be cool. That'd be a good month goal. Paint 18 bikers. But, uh, yeah, Dark Angels probably need some love. They're probably getting a new codex eventually soon. Rumors are that Space Marines might actually get a codex before Dark Angels. So we'll see. We'll see about that. Um, but uh, they need some love. They're not competitive right now. You know, I love Deathwing, and I like playing with Deathwing, but they're not the most competitive army. That's okay. Um, so.
So maybe, yeah, maybe I'll give them some love next month. We'll see. Dark Angels in June. Eh. I'd love to paint up one more Imperial Knight. That's my goal. Eventually get another Imperial, one more Imperial Knight. And build him with a bunch of magnetization so that I can switch between the other types. The new guys are really cool. Um, yeah, I came up with a pretty good 1500 point list that. Uh, is 1500? I don't remember. It was 1850. Yeah, it's hard to run the Knights at 1850 or 1500. Because you can only really get in three. Or four, I mean. You can get four. Oh, well, my nights are pretty expensive. I run the 385s. And at 385, you can't really run them. You can run three of the, four of the 375 nights. The Paladins. Or the new guy with the rending gun. But, uh, yeah. yeah. I like the Forgeable ones, as I said. The Forgeable ones are, I love. Just the look of them. They look so much cooler. I'm glad they now have those carapace mounted guns, the new guys, but uh, we'll see. I might be trading for an Imperial Knight, we'll see. And I put in an offer to trade for one the other day. I don't think the person really wanted it, though, what I was trading, but. Hmm, we'll see. Yeah, the other option is just me keep going with Tyranids. Because I'm really seeing the, the light at the end of the tunnel with these Tyranids. I've painted up a lot of them. And now my army is actually starting to like get really uh, fleshed out. And I most of my models are actually painted and looking good. And I'm proud of that. Like I'm, I'm really proud of the amount of work that I've done with these painting with Jays. And the painting challenges over the last, you know, eight months. Or six months, I guess. Six six months. But uh, yeah, I gotta keep going with them. They're really good. Getting stuff done, one week at a time, you know. I have my talk screen done, and uh, yeah, should we should probably call it there because everything needs to dry. And uh, yeah, let's let's call it here. So that concludes another painting with Jay. I really hope you got stuff done. Had a good time. Listen to me ramble. Hands always smell funny when I take off the gloves. But, uh, yeah, I had a great time. I painted up some more Tyranids. All's good, you know. Can't complain. I only have a few more hundred guys left to paint. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, that means that there's going to be painting with Jays indefinitely. The series has been too good. And I've got too much work done to ever kill it. So, thank you so much for watching. And once again, thank you all my Patreon supporters. I'm going to put up a video before this airs. I'm just going to thanking you all because it's been such an amazing... Than getting my computer fixed, and uh, I really appreciate it. But if you don't want to support me, obviously, uh, anybody else, I'm not, I'm not pressuring you to support me. Just I want to thank the Patreon people. But uh, stay tuned for next week. I hope you got stuff done, and uh, thank you very much. Until next time, this is Jay saying happy painting. Which Jay. <laughs>